You love to see it. Everybody, you love to see it. Cori Bush has won in Missouri's first district. And I just want to showcase the results from last time around. It was 37 to 56, or, you know, 36.9 to 56.7. And the roles have seemingly been reversed. And again, it's great because Cori Bush was someone who was an activist after the Ferguson protests, you know, and it's like, this is like, it's amazing to see prominent protesters, like, against police brutality and abuse of force and racism actually claw their way to Congress. It is beautiful to watch. Um, And she didn't make it in 2018, but she kept the momentum going. And that's the thing, is that this is a trend, right? Like, sometimes you barely miss the mark. But if you don't give up and you keep going, the next time you try you will succeed. And that is what is an important story here. So I want to play a little bit from her victory speech. The volume is a little awful. It's absolute garbage, actually. So I'm going to try my best to make this audible. But uh, it's a very good victory speech, this clip specifically. And Cori Bush is just absolutely great. Uh, So there you go. We've been called radicals. Terrorists. Mm -hmm. Mm We've been dismissed as impossible, uh, as an impossible fringe movement. Yeah. But now we are a multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multi-faith mass movement united in demanding change, in demanding accountability, in demanding that our police, our government, our country recognize that black lives do indeed matter. And that these are not just words or symbolic gestures. But with concrete action, and, sh- and we will measure those with our outcomes. Again, it is fundamentally brilliant to watch someone who has been on the front lines of police brutality and protesting and activism actually get to Congress. It is beautiful. And I also want to plug a Netflix documentary that came out uh, last year called Knock Down the House. If you have Netflix, you should watch this. This followed the campaigns of Amy Valella, Paula Jean Swearingen, and AOC, and Cori Bush. And obviously, only AOC won their primary uh, last time around. This time, Cori Bush won, and Paula Jean Swearingen won. Um, I don't know if Amy Valella was running for anything. I, I'm so sorry if my brain just turns off here. Um, but it's, again, just seeing that, like in 2018, two years ago. You can watch this documentary right now, and I watched it when it came out. But it's, it's, it's just, like, amazing to see, like, how a campaign starts from the literal rock bottom and actually can claw their way to victory. It's beautiful. So definitely plugging this real quick if you have not seen it. But again, it's just like, it's going to be great. Now, again, this is the thing. This is a multi-pronged approach. Obviously, I've said all the fucking time, I'm not a huge fucking advocate of electoral politics. That doesn't mean I don't vote. If you're one of those people that doesn't vote or goes like, like, I'm sorry, but like it literally takes 30 seconds to see which candidate is the most interesting. And then boom, you fill out the fucking form. You mail it in. You walk into the thing. You walk out. It's literally not hard. Anybody who thinks voting is difficult or, oh, do I have to? Like, I'm sorry, but it's just, you're dumb. Like, I get it. I get it. I, again, don't really care for electoralism. I am more of a direct action person. But again, that's why I like Cori Bush, because she was a direct action person. She was a protester. She was an activist during a crucial time of fascism hitting the streets during Obama's fucking tenure. Again, that's what you can't forget. I know Trump has made a fucking mess of this country, but Obama unleashed fascist goons on Ferguson, and that cannot be forgotten. And again, to see this, like, like this climb from not really doing too well, but not doing too poorly, to absolutely fucking just turning the table. And it's great. Again, it is just fundamentally out 
standing. And again, if you are against voting on the left, I'm sorry, but you're just a whiny baby. Like, honestly. Like, especially if it's mail-in voting. If you have to wait in a line, right, and you have to do that whole thing, I get it. I hear you, right? I understand. But, like, at the same time, it, it's even then, it's just one day. It is one day out of 365, and in this year, 366 days where you can do things that aren't voting. And again, don't pin your hopes on voting. Don't have all your hopes and dreams be on voting. But voting can yield interesting outcomes. Bernie Sanders' campaign shifted the Overton window further to the left. AOC Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib have shifted the Overton window radically to the left in mainstream politics. Now, again, they are not anarchists. I am an anarchist. But I can totally foresee if this keeps trending, right, I can totally foresee a situation where we do have someone who is an anarchist running for Congress. Maybe it'll be me. Why the fuck not, right? Like, that's the thing. That's what you have to do. You have to flood the systems on all cylinders. I am totally in favor of a revolution, but a revolution will not be fought in a military style. We need to revolt on all sides. We need to do it in the workforce, in labor. We need to do it electorally. We need to do it in the streets. We need to do it with institutions. We need to do it with our money. We need to stop promoting corporations. We need to stop buying corporate products. We need to invest in our communities. We need to build community solidarity. And this is not something that happens in six months. This is not something that happens in a couple weeks or a weekend. This is a multi-year long project. And that is my opinion. If, again, if you think all voting is useless and a waste of your time, okay, but what else are you going to do on election day, right? Like seriously, unless you've got a very, very important strategy, which I'm open to, by the way, I'm not like advocating to say that you have to vote no matter what. If you want to give me a good strategy, I'm open to it. But at the same time, this does a lot of work for shifting that window left. And I'm sorry, as of right now, a majority of Americans are not anarchists. We're getting there. It's a lot more than it was 10 years ago. It's a lot more than it was five years ago. It's a lot more than it was fucking one year ago. We're getting there. But it's a multi-step process. You have to revolt from all sides. Again, most importantly, the workforce, labor. Another thing, stop buying from corporations if you can. If you have the money to avoid Walmart and go to a local mom and pop shop, do it. If you have money to donate to you know, any sorts of local, like, you know, say farmers markets, you know, anything like that to make sure that they don't collapse, do it. But again, this is a multi-pronged approach. We need to first and foremost have a populace, a citizen uprising of well-informed, well-educated, and well-meaning people. And we are getting there. And this is just another step in that journey. Thank you for watching. God bless.